Finn's Little Fib by Tom Percival. And we've read a couple of these uh, Big Bright Feelings books. Um, I think they're fantastic. Uh, so if you want to look for them, you can look for some more Tom Percival in the, in the search bar. And you can find a bunch of that I read. Finn was buzzing with excitement. He was spending a few days at Grandma's house with his sister, Simone. Finn loved staying there. Grandma always brought them treats. She took them to eat picnics at the beach, and she let Finn stay up a whole half hour later than usual. It was so fun! Grandma's house was filled with all sorts of wonderful, beautiful, but very fragile things. Finn was usually extremely careful in Grandma's house, but today he was a, a bit overexcited. He bounced his ball higher and higher and higher until... <sighs> Finn stared at the broken clock in horror. He tried his best to fix it, but it didn't really work. And then Grandma walked in and she looked at the mess. She looked at Finn. His tummy twisted, his mind raced, and that was when it happened. Finn told a fib. Oh, uh, Simone broke the clock, he said. I was trying to fix it. It wasn't a big fib. It could easily have happened. But as soon as he said it, a strange little blob appeared. Grandma didn't notice the blob, but she did ask how Simone had reached the clock. Finn panicked and told another fib. Immediately, a second blob appeared. Grandma didn't notice this one either. But she did look very sad about her clock. It made Finn feel funny inside. The next day, Mom and Dad called, and after they had spoken with Grandma, they asked Finn about the clock. Somehow, another fib s slipped out, and a third blob appeared. Now that he'd started fibbing, it felt impossible to stop. All weekend long, the fibs about the clock piled up around him. So there was a mouse now with some cheese. Finn tried to catch it, so did his sister, Simone. Finn couldn't snuggle on the sofa because the fibs all got in the way. He didn't want to play with Simone because the fibs made him sad. And he couldn't eat his picnic lunch because the fibs made his tummy feel strange. Finn felt awful. If only he'd never told that first fib. But he had, and it was too late to change that. Now, or was it? There was one thing he could do. He could tell the truth. Finn's face grew hot. What if Grandma got angry? But he knew what he had to do. It was me, said Finn suddenly, the words tripping over themselves. I broke the clock. I'm really sorry. I blame Simone. Finn heard a soft, quiet, and one by one, the whole crowd of fibs vanished. Finn felt so much lighter. Don't worry, Finn, said Grandma. We all make mistakes sometimes. Thank you for telling the truth. After that, everything was back to normal, and in fact, it was better than normal. 
It was the best trip ever. From that day on, Finn decided he would always try to tell the truth. And if by mistake a fib ever did pop out, as they sometimes do, then he told the truth right away. Okay, so actually my dad isn't a superhero. <laughs> Dear reader, hands up, who's never, ever told a fib? Now, if you have your hand in the air, then that's a fib right there. You see, we all tell fibs occasionally, but it's never a good idea. Sometimes we think we're telling a fib for a good reason. The problem is that you have to remember your fib, and it weighs you down. So you end up feeling heavy and miserable. Here are a few tips for dealing with fibs. Try not to fib in the first place. Tempting as it may seem to tell a fib to get out of trouble, it usually just leads to more trouble. So take a deep breath and admit when you've done something wrong. If you have told a fib, then own up as soon as you can. Admit what really happened and explain why you fibbed to a trusted adult, and they'll help you fix your problem. Don't ever feel tempted to tell a fib to make yourself seem better. You don't need to. You're great just the way you are. No matter how you're feeling, remember that it always helps to talk about it. Be open, be honest, be you. Love, Tom. And here's an organization that offers resources if you're interested in learning more called childmind.org. There's one caveat to that that I find is important um, is when somebody asks you, like, am I wearing a really cool shirt or something? And you don't necessarily think it's the best. I don't think it's a like, I don't think you should fib in that situation, but I think you could um, lighten the mean thing and say something uh, not as mean so the person doesn't feel bad about it. So if the fib is to spare someone's feelings on something that's an opinion, did I make the best meal ever tonight? Well, it was good. It wasn't the best. Um, it's, I, I don't think it's okay to fib, but I, I think uh, softening the blow might be best. Good night. I love you.